Okay, thank you for saying that. I've lost my pen, hold on guys. Let me go grab myself a pen. I have one right here. There we go. I need a pen. Okay. Okay, it's uh, 8.35, um, uh, we're at the uh, Troy Community Land Bank Finance Committee meeting, um, roll call, I guess. Uh, Albert Watson, treasurer. And we got John Cubitt there. John Cubitt. Yep. Uh, Tony Tazi, executive director. It looks like Catherine is on. Yep, Kate is on. Uh, on. Yep, I'm here. Oh, okay. Morning, Kate. Uh, the meeting minutes are. Uh, yeah, as we talked about just before we started the meeting, um, Seats got a new person doing minutes um, and they're. They're taking their time to get the minutes done because they want to make sure that she started to do them right. Um, I did get a set of minutes for I don't know what what meeting it was a month or two ago, and I ended up having to really write the minutes because they were they were that bad. But she's just starting out, so um, you know, got to cut her some slack. Having said that, we're getting way behind on minutes, so I'll talk to. Um, my primary contact over there and um, kind of nudge her a little bit. She already knows that uh, it's an issue, so. Okay. Um, right. So you think we'll have minutes for next the next finance committee meeting? You know what? That's what I'll tell her we need. <laughs> okay, all right. Tony, if need be, let's chat offline. I might be able to help with the minutes because they need to understand that we're not just a regular nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We're a public authority and we have to post all this stuff. So um, we'll talk offline about that, but I might have someone that can help, so. Oh, that would be cool. All right. Yep. Thanks, Kate. Are you paying them for that or? Yeah, we do. Oh. Well, that's one of, that may be one of the issues. Uh, we are paying for them for that, but our cash flow situations have put us in the position of not actually reimbursing them on a timely basis, depending on how cash flow is from month to month. So uh, I don't think that's an issue, but it may be. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is uh, the, nine, the draft of the 990. Yeah. Uh, Albert, are you familiar with 990s? Yeah, I mean, I looked through it this morning. Um, I just looked through it real quick. I mean, does it look okay to you? I went through it. Um, there was one change that I made um, for, they had you down as a, a member in 2020. And I had them correct that because you didn't actually sign the oath book until I think February of this year, it might've been January. Okay. Right. Um, and they had Sharon Nichols down, or I'm sorry, they had you down and I had them um, put Sharon Nichols down and, you know, so you'll be on it for the 2021 990. Okay. Um, that's the only change that I found that jumped out at me. Now, do you and I both have to sign it, or? Um, I I don't sign don't, the tax return. I just signed the uh, the uh, the other document that was in. I saw two documents. Oh, the uh, I don't think you have to sign the nine ninety. I think the board authorizes me to do that. That's the, right. And it's the annual budget. Um, <laughs> Uh, every every year yeah. I do this, it, it gets confusing. Um, the treasurer has to certify the ABO budget, and then um, the, it's the Char five hundred. 
That's what I saw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one the treasurer does have to sign along okay. with Tony, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was Tony. And I said, yeah, it was Tony. And then my name was underneath. Yeah. Keith, does that get certified now or in March? Or um, I think when you upload it, it'll tell us. Um, but I think, um, and maybe I'm confusing it, Tony, with the final, like when we certify the Paris report. So maybe yeah. there isn't a certification up front like that. We'll have to see when we, when you upload it, you know, but you might be right. It might just be uploaded. That's it. I'll, I'll take a look at the Paris instructions after the meeting and, uh, just see, see what it says. I, I know for the annual budget, you know, we have to post that by November 1st. But then we also, I, I did this last year, I posted it and the way I, I, the way I uploaded it, I also certified it, which um, when you submit by November 1st, you're supposed to submit it, but not certify it. So in March, we update that budget because we, at that point have our audit done. We have our, you know, year end or previous year um, financials. And um, last year, what Paris did was they uncertified it for me and then changed the numbers. And uh, then I then I certified it, and I believe um, that I believe that's where the treasurer needs to certify it as well. So, but again, let me. Every year I do this. Um, it's always a little quirky for me. So I'll let me read the instructions. So at least for this submittal, it's, it, it is what it needs to be. Did you have an opportunity to look through the, uh, to go through the whole thing, the 990? I scanned through it. Okay. Um, like I said, I found that, that one error with you and um, and some of the time reporting that they had in there, I, I had I, them. I did see that. Yeah, I saw correct. That. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I didn't see anything. Uh, so when do you have to return it? Uh, this has to be um, has to be submitted to IRS by um, November first. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, do, do you want me to actually, uh, I guess we should take a look at it today then, right? We can a do that. Look, a thorough look at it today, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, I can look at it today and, you know, give you a call tomorrow. We could talk about it to see if there's anything I see. Well, the board actually needs to take action on it tomorrow and their meeting oh, okay. is at 8.30, so. Um, I did well, I look at it. Oh, I'm sorry. I did look at it as well, and I've seen it year after year, you know, so for, for, <clears throat> for what, six years now? So it looks pretty good. I think Tony caught, you know, um, some of the little things that needed to be fixed because you have to disclose the board members and all that stuff, so um it looked good to me i mean there's a lot of verbiage in there but it, are the numbers right tony the numbers look good from, from what i looked at um oh, okay i'll tell you the very first year i did this was just after joe fama left and so i was signing off on a report on a tax filing that i wasn't here for <laughs> So um, that was very that was very odd, um, and it put me in an uncomfortable position. But it is what it it was what it was. Usually, so, um, the, the audit is done closer to when we file the nine ninety, so it's not so far apart. So you can look at the audit numbers. Well, and, you know what I mean? And this they keep. We always have extensions. I'm not sure why, but you know, so it, it's months away from when they presented the audited financials, you know, so it's hard to say, oh, you know, here's where they got the numbers, but that's generally where they get the numbers from, from that. That's a good point. You know, and I think next year we should not ask for an extension. We should just get it done. Not sure why we extended it. You gotta be a little careful with that because sometimes, uh, most of the time, in my experience, audited statements don't match up with 
of tax returns. So you gotta be a little careful about um, the numbers aren't gonna match from the, from the audited statement to the tax return. So you gotta be a little bit careful about, <laughs> I mean, that's why you, you really have to look at the numbers, see if they, I mean, if they look all right to you. I, do you have the audited statements or you didn't get those yet, right? Oh no, we have, we've had the audited statements. Oh, okay, all, all right, okay. Um, well, if you want, I'll take a look at um, the audited statements and the tax return. I'll get back to you this afternoon. Okay, I've got a uh, a 1230 New York Land Bank Association meeting that usually runs about an hour that I'd, I'd want to be on, um, but I don't have to be. So whenever you want to connect with me, just let me know and uh, I'll make um, myself available. Are you like around two or three o'clock? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess the next item is the budget. Yeah. So the budget, um, one thing that I should say on the budget is, um, you know, this is a template that's prepared for all public authorities. And for the type of public authority we are, it's not, um, it, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to pull this up. It's not, let's see, how can I say this? So for most public authorities, they have, um, you know, ongoing revenue that comes in um, and they have expenses that go out like we do. So for most public authorities, um, this budget is more important than it would be for us because for us, we don't have uh, an ongoing income stream, revenue stream coming in. So what it turns out to be is really just kind of a, a statutory requirement to file this. Um, and as I said earlier, when the audit is done, the 2021 audit is complete, then um, this gets updated with real numbers and um, and better projected numbers for say 2023. And then for the type of public authority, we are 24 and 2025. Those are just, you know, make up numbers because we really don't know what the world's gonna be like that far out. So uh, this, to me, this is just kind of a, a fake budget that needs to be filed. I don't. I shouldn't say fake, but uh, a really incomplete budget compared to most public authorities that needs to be filed by November 1st and then gets updated with uh, much better numbers by uh, April 1st. Uh, okay. So having said that, do you want me to walk everyone through it? That's pretty oh, generous. Okay, let me find where this is. Okay, are you able to see that? Yep. Okay. So, uh, so and under the the top revenue and financial sources, um, those categories that are in the template, charges for services, we never charge for services, um, rental and financial financing income. We don't have revenue that ever comes in for that. We could have rental income at some point in the future, but we haven't so far. Um, and there's a chance we may this year. Other operating revenues, we haven't had any. Um, and I just plugged in $300,000 for 2023, 2024, 2025. That's really just a repeat of what's been done in previous years. And I, it doesn't really make all that much sense, again, because of the type of budget this is, but that is the kind of budget it is. 
but the real meat is are the next two and three sections um, are non-operating revenues. So this is a little cumbersome for me to explain to you. We've been having conversations with the city about the potential for um, financial help through ARPA. And we're also busy developing the uh, Legacy City Access Program information. <clears throat> so we don't really know at this point what may happen with the city in terms of uh, financial support through ARPA. And the numbers we've put together so far for the Legacy City Program are, you know, they're, they're relatively okay numbers, but it's still a little bit early in the game. So these numbers are more or less the result of the ARPA budget and the um, uh, Legacy City pro formas that we've drafted. Because the city has not had a chance to look at what I have submitted for ARPA, and because city administration doesn't want the information um, disseminated until they've had a chance to look at it and talk to me about, you know, here's Tony, here's what we're looking at, um, blah, 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 blah. And they don't, and they want to have that conversation before it goes to the city council. Um, I didn't include the backup information to this. So I, it's, it should be there but that's the reason why it's not. But I can still talk about it. <clears throat> um, let's see, and I've got these notes. So where are we? So for state subsidies or grants, the $533,000 is what we will receive this year um, from enterprise community funding. Um, we should receive uh, just a little over $300,000 for our last draw um, sometime in November. And a lot of those funds will, um, will be for some acquisitions. Uh, let's see, the 34,915, those are the PPP1 and the PPP2 um, Loan forgiveness programs, both loans have been forgiven. Actually, yesterday, um, the second loan uh, was, I, I got a record that it was forgiven. So that's that's good to get behind us. Um, so the $1.6 million is the big number. And that's the budget that I have submitted to the city that they need to look at and that they want to talk to me about before it gets, you know, really goes public. Uh, and I just submitted that yesterday at about one o'clock or so. So, um, and the six oh five. That's that's the two hundred sixty five thousand dollars from community loan fund that we're projecting to receive. Um, and property sales projected property sales for 11 Winnie and 54 Fifth Avenue. For 2022, where are we here? Yeah, okay, so the $250,000 that I'm showing for 2022 for federal grants, that is a really wild guess number. There are a number of bills on in the federal um, human infrastructure package that could very well be funding for land bank. As a matter of fact, um, there are a, uh, there's two or three bills that specifically call out land, uh, uh, you know, this money can be used for land banks. So it's just a guess that in the event they pass that human infrastructure bill and that those bills are included, then that's just my guess as to what we may end up with. Again, this is a budget that's very quirky, uh, especially for the kind of public authority we are. So for municipal 
grants, the $1.5 million is also ARPA funding. The city's receiving their ARPA funding in two tranches. And so what, what I'm showing here is 1.6 billion um, this year. And if there is another round next year, which I think there will be, and I think the city will follow suit with what, the, with what they're doing this year, then um, I'm speculating 1.5 million and change for next year um, for a program that I have you know, we we don't have any idea what that program will look like right now, but I think that number should be in there. And the six hundred thirty-one thousand dollars would be the sale of River Street, the final disbursement. I need to spell of um, the Pioneer loan for seven ninety-one River Street. and um, contributions that we would expect that the developer provide for legacy city access program to if there is a second year program. Sorry, I'm trying to correct my spelling error for this. Okay, so that's, uh, let me stop here. Do you guys have questions on any of that? I know there are numbers that are just really thrown together and you don't have the background information. Yeah, one thing I see, Tony, you, you, shouldn't, um, you shouldn't be including loans as revenue. Okay. So yeah, you should back off those uh, community loan fund loans and that whatever that Pioneer loan disbursement is. Any Where loan- because that's really not, that shouldn't be on the um, operating statement. It's on the balance sheet, but not the operating statement. Well, I've got to show it here somewhere. You might have to put an asterisk or something, you know, to, you got yeah. one, but that, should, that shouldn't be in, in an operating statement. Yeah, this kind of, the way this is filed, Albert, you can't, you can't give the ABO an asterisk. Oh, really? No, it's got a, the, the ABO requirements are really weird. Because technically, it's not revenue. No, I hear what you're saying. That's I'm yeah. just trying to find uh, an appropriate place to put it. Well, I think Albert, that as far as this budget's concerned, that the um, it's okay in a sense uh, because technically, if we sold that property, which we are, which takes out the loan. It is income of sorts, but on our budgets, you're right. It would be a liability, obviously, that we carry and that that gets paid off with the income from the building. Um, so I suppose, you know, with that theory, there's income from the buildings, but the income right now is coming from the loans. I don't know if that helps explain it, but. Should I show it as? Oh, well, that's uh, not really, you can't get in. It's, well, if there's a, between the sale price and the amount of the loan, that's revenue, but you can't count a loan as revenue. I would agree, yeah. Well, if that's the case, then what I'll have to do is pull out the loan shown as revenue. <clears throat> under uh, financial sources, and then also pull it out under expenditures, because what I'm showing is, here's the, here's the loan funds coming in right here. And then down here, here's where the loan funds are being paid back. So I'd have to go through and um, revise this, which I can certainly do. Um, but if that makes sense to you to do, then I'll do it. So it sounds like, Albert, you're saying that loans should not show up here as loans either. Should, loans, yeah, loans shouldn't be on an operating statement. Okay. You know? I mean, it's a balance sheet thing. It's not a. Um, it's not an income and expense thing. Um, 
I mean, you're right about putting the interest and financing charges there. That's right, as an expense, but. But, it, um, but it, I can't show it as an expense paid if I don't also show it as coming in in the first place, because it's not gonna balance out, right? Well, um, you don't really, you have to worry about it balancing on the, in, on the um, operating statement. The, it, that's on the balance sheet, the balancing. You just put whatever, whatever's coming in and whatever's going out. So interest, interest is an expense. So that should be on there. But um, the sale of the property is revenue. Yep, now I get that. Yeah, so. But so you're saying show now, the interest a, that has. If there's a gap between the sale price and the, and the loan amount, that's revenue. So you say you take out a hundred thousand dollar loan, you sell the property yep. for one hundred and fifty. The fifty thousand dollars is the revenue. No, I, I understand that, but <clears throat> I hear you saying don't show the the loan. Say the yeah, the principal. That's infl yeah, that's inflating your numbers. <laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to make sure I'm I'm trying to make sure I'm balancing it out. So it, you're saying don't show the loans coming in at all. <clears throat> a lesson yeah. for for interest. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, but it sounds like you're also saying show that the principal is being paid back as an expenditure. Right. Yeah. If I can't show the loan coming in <clears throat> somewhere as a financial resource, then it's not going to balance because I'm not going to show it coming in, but I am going to show it being paid out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't, um, I think you're getting, you're confusing yourself with balancing. It's not, the operating statement is not a balancing issue. It's just, it's an operating issue. No, I, I hear, I, I hear that. Okay. So, but if, if we're it's getting, just that, it's just the way operations are going, you know? So let's say, let's say community loan fund is giving us a hundred thousand dollars. <clears throat> that's not the number, but that's the number I'm going to use. So you're saying for 2021, don't show that as a financial resource. But yeah, that's but, not a rev that's not revenue. Yeah. But you're saying show that hundred thousand dollars as being paid back as an expenditure. Well, no, the fine the finance cost is uh is yeah, just the interest. Expense. Yeah, just the interest. Yeah. <laughs> Albert, is there a way to show the loan? Because it really is a cash infusion too. So I, I get what Tony's saying and we're kind of limited of what we can report and how we can report it into Paris's template. Is there a way under revenue to put another line there and call it? Well, he does say other. Yeah, I guess. Uh, we can't we can change the lines. These are from the yeah. template. Yeah, so it is other... Pardon revenue because i so mean you, are you telling way, me if you take an if you take out a loan then you have are you saying that the, you know you have to notify the public that you're taking a loan out for cash flow is that what you're saying well this is a budget <laughs> no i'm just saying that this is the screen and the stuff that we're allowed to enter right and if there's zero income, if we do it, and I'm not saying you're, you're wrong, if we do what you're saying, though, there really is no income. <laughs> so then you have all these expenditures. So what really we're doing is a capital cash infusion from the loans until the properties get sold, because had they been sold, um, we would have that cash flow. And because of COVID and construction delays and costs, we're just not there yet. So I have the same question Tony does and that what other way could we really do it other than this way? Because there's only so much they let us enter. And if we don't have, if we have zero revenue, that's like, what? They're going to come back and say, you know, you have all these expenses. Where's the cash flow? Okay. So, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the way it should be reported because that's what's happening.
We can't show it. If as... you put if you put uh, a loan in there, that's not revenue. <clears throat> no, I it, I hear clearly what you're saying. Not everything here is supposed to be revenue. And you're you're actually but then, that's not you know. But it's then, not gonna. Go ahead. Well, what? But if it's not revenue, and I, and I understand it's not revenue, it's a loan. Um, it is an expenditure, and it's not gonna. It, it's gonna make this budget look like. Well, it's an expenditure on the interest. That's that's the expense. That's all that you put on the expense side is the, is the interest cost. Okay, but you you want you want me to show paying back the principal too, though, right? No, right. no, you don't have to put you don't put that in the as an operating expense. Just the interest. So don't don't so show you take it out. Yeah, you take it out of the top and the bottom. You take the, the okay, okay the amount, the loan amount out of the bottom too. You know, it's just the interest expense. That's all you have to um, show on the operating state. state. Okay, I can. Well, if you're saying that, take it take it out of both ends. Then that right. does make yeah. sense to me. Yeah, I, I just didn't want to, you know, show it in you, one and you, not the other. You would estimate the interest expense charges, but that's it. That's all that would be shown. On okay, uh, let me uh, amend this then. And yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, as long I mean, as long as it's yeah, 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 done the same way. And on uh, both so that's what you budget. were talking about balancing. Yeah, yeah. What, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not the the. The loan amount isn't on the operating estate, just the interest expense. That's all you have to show. Okay. All right. Well, that's, uh, I see exactly what you're saying. I'll just pull out uh, all the loan amounts. Um, the interest, right, yeah. I'll take a, I'll take a guess as, as to what the interest, right. no, I, I have yeah. the interest in here. So. And if anybody had questions, then you tell them you took out a loan, which would be explained by interest expense costs. That yeah, yeah, that you're yeah. Showing. yeah. I hear you. Okay. Yeah, that, that does make sense. All right. I'll make the adjustments and um, I'll try to shoot them to shoot them to you um, before we get together this afternoon. Okay. All right. Um, so I was kind of hoping we'd get a recommendation from finance to the board, but I don't think that's possible because this really has to be changed. Maybe we just uh, explain it to the board tomorrow, Albert, that you yeah, and I. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we're going to have to explain it quickly because I think we're, we're going to lose bodies um, not too long after we're in the meeting and I'm afraid we could lose our quorum. So. Maybe what I'll, I'm talking out loud to myself, maybe what I'll do is um, after I amend this and you and I talk about it, I'll send an email to the board to explain it just to save some time for in the meeting tomorrow. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, that was an education, thanks. <laughs> no, that was, that was good. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so did you uh, want me to go, did you want me right. to go through the rest of this thing or do you want me to amend it first and then, uh, we'll talk about it. You were well, basically all you got to do is you just say you taking out the loan amounts, right? And yeah, everything else is just, yeah. What's the capital asset, asset outlay? That would be the purchase of um, properties we're expecting okay. to acquire right. this year. Okay. And which I'm guessing we would be doing next year. Um, this year is much more finite. You know, we're pretty sure that's going to happen next year. I'm just kind of replicating the model, assuming that there's going to be a year two for ARPA and a year two for Legacy City program. So. And the professional services contracts is just um, contractors or <laughs> audit, audit lawyers fees, stuff like that. 
Yeah, <clears throat> and a lot of those numbers come from the budgets that I've submitted to the city. So for instance, they've got a budget of, you know, multiple buildings for the legacy city program. And um, for the budgets to work, some ARPA funding is being requested to lower the cost so the developer actually makes money rather than loses money, despite the uh, legacy city grant funds. Um, you know, we thought the grant funds are generous and they are, but it still doesn't get the projects to where they need to be because the the market sales in North Central just aren't where they would be in a in a different neighborhood. So, um, so anyway, um, a lot of the professional services contracts, well, for uh, twenty twenty. We think it's going to be two hundred thousand dollars, which is a jump up from what they actually were last year, and that's largely because of of the Legacy City um, program. If we jump into that and we expend funds for things like architecturals, um, closing costs, um, environmental assessments, structural evaluations then those are services that are going to cost more in 2021 and we would not have had those costs in 2020. And so the way I'm showing the, the flow of cash here in 2021, I'm thinking um, the legacy city monies are likely going to be spent in November and December merely for soft costs and then next year, it'll roll into more soft costs, but then actual construction, which is why the numbers jump up. Um, and then the following year, so th in this year, we would have um, kind of a combination of Legacy, Legacy City 2021 and Legacy City 2022, if there's a second round. So this 769 would show the balance of the expenses of a second year of Leg Legacy City. And then this, everything in 2024 and 2025, they're all just placeholder numbers. So that's what I'm trying to show there. Okay. Um, Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. So the $339,000, I'm showing that as the payback of principal for the Maristar and the community loan fund loans. Yeah, so I, if I'm pulling yeah. that out of here, I'll pull it out of here. Okay, that's, yeah, yep. Okay. Um, all right, do you guys have any more questions, comments, guidance on this? No. All right. So let me. What's going on? Okay. So where are we in the agenda here? So September financials. Yeah. yeah, and I, as I always say, I that's a different language to me, Albert, and I apologize as many times as I try to figure out how to read that. It's well, uh, it's just showing the sixty-six thousand dollar loss on total revenue of one hundred seventy-nine thousand seven hundred five ninety-seven. Um, from uh, January to the end of September. So, I mean, I can just say something tomorrow at the board meeting real quick about what I see, but. Okay. Um, 
And that really should start changing as we sell 54 Fifth Avenue and 11 Winnie Avenue. Um, you know, hopefully 54 will sell before the end of this year is out. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. 11 Winnie probably won't sell until 2022. So the um the PPP loan it's the total is seventeen thousand. Um, one loan was seventeen thousand. The second loan was a little bit higher than that. I think it was like seventeen thousand eight and change. Okay, so the second one wasn't you didn't receive notification on that until this month, October. Uh yes, I think it was yesterday. Um, oh, okay. All the right. bank the bank said the. Um, SBA forgiveness notification. So we've okay. been forgiven for both loans. Because on, on this operating statement, they have 17,000, which is the, the first one, I guess. So yeah, so the, the notice just came in yesterday or the day before. So it wouldn't show up in September. So originally, I guess, without the um, the net loss was 83,000, but with the 17,000, it brings it down to 66, 259, 92. I guess at this point last year, it um, had a net loss of 54,252. So. so I guess it will look better with the, at the end of October, huh? <laughs> a little better. <laughs> yeah, still bad, but better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna look a lot better in 2022 so yeah, actually if uh if what is blossoming right now moves forward we're gonna have a really really good 2022 at least we should okay so I guess that's it. Huh? Okay, we talked about the community loan fund commitment letter. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, is there any way you can get that extended to like six months or something? The maturity date on that? Um, I could talk to Dorian about it. Um, I think I think it's probably likely that. CLF's finance committee approved the loan with those terms in it. What Dorian did tell me, and this is, you know, this is kind of the way we work as well. Um, he said, you know, if you're running into problems and buildings aren't being sold when you think they are, let me know and we can extend the uh, the term. So I can, I can contact him and um, just kind of have a re refresher conversation with them. Um, I, I'll certainly ask if they can revise that to extend the term. Yeah, that's not um, a lot of time, yeah. No, I agreed, agreed. That's, yeah. and again, that's because we started talking about a month ago and um, I think I was a little bit more optimistic about when the one properties would sell. So we've lost a month since the conversation started. And- yeah, if you have to, if you f take a full advance on that, that means you got to pay it back by the beginning of uh, February. No, I know. A so, as written, as written, I know yeah, that. Yeah, as, as, it, as it looks right now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Kate had the same concern that she expressed to me yesterday. So, um, okay. All right, I'll give Dorian a call and see what he can do, if anything. Okay. And the uh, the property inventory report, um, you know, I do apologize for not having that done. Albert, I know you wanted to see that before every finance committee meeting. I've been, <laughs> I've had my nose in budgets since um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And today's Thursday, and I still have more to do. Um, 
So that's why I, I, I haven't been able to get to that. It's just these, the budgets that I've had to work on had have deadlines sometime this week. Uh, one deadline was Tuesday. That's the stuff the city wanted to see and I didn't get into them until yesterday, early afternoon. The 990, well, that's not a budget that I have anything to do with, but the uh, 2020 annual budget, um, I had to pull that together and I couldn't do that until I had the information into the city so I could know what those numbers were. And what I'm trying to get done by the end of this week is my quarterly report to enterprise community so that we can ask for it, the final disbursement of $300,000 and change, whatever that is. Well, so uh, it's been a busy yeah. budgeting week. Yeah. If we can, um, I mean, we can do it for next month. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll catch up to it as soon as I can once I get these budgets and the quarterly report behind me. So, right. anything else? Uh, not unless you guys have questions. No, I don't. Okay. So, um, are you going to be in your office around two o'clock? I guess two two thirty. Uh, I'll either be in the office or I'll be here. Um, I'm working from home right now. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, but did did you want to get together physically? Um, it's so kind of easier looking at a printed copy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's not a problem. I, I can do that. Okay. I was planning on going in anyway. Um, okay. I mean, it should so, take more than like half an hour or so, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's not a problem. It's just uh, going into this meeting, I was thinking, well, if, if the budget, the, if the annual budget looks okay, then I would... Um, start posting it on the Paris website just to get the information there. And then if the board approved it tomorrow, then all I'd have to do is click submit. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on that. Um, it's not due till November, so I can I can do it on Saturday or Sunday. Okay, all right. I was just trying to get a little bit ahead of myself. So, okay. So I, I think uh, somebody needs to make a motion to adjourn, right? Motion. Second. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so I've got 922. Yeah. Alrighty. All right. Thank you guys. Albert, I'll see you later. Take care. Yep. All right. Thanks. Take care, John.